Welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today we are going to talk about lean problem solving approach. I have made certain videos in which I have spoken about some of the commonly used lean tools. I have also spoken about problem solving approach on various occasions. So in today's video we are going to learn lean problem solving approach in which we are going to see what is the problem solving approach and how lean tools at various phases help us first identify the problem then identify the root causes of the problem then identify the solutions and in the end controlling the improved state of the problem so let's begin so the topics that we are going to cover today uh, the first topic is how to recognize the problem and the lean tool associated with that would be project charter there could be another tool that can be used the name of the tool is voice of customer and voice of business tool so we hear both the voices and identify what is the problem that exists the next thing that we are going to learn in today's video is to identify the root causes of the problem so the lean tools which help us identify the root causes are eight ways and value stream mapping then we are going to identify the solution with the help of yy analysis so yy analysis is a lean tool which helps us do that and in the last we will understand how to control the improved state with the help of a control plan friends you can buy my authored books on amazon my first book is eight steps to problem solving which talks about six sigma concepts and my second book is continuous improvement the lean way which talks about the lean concepts Project charter comprises of the six elements: business case, problem statement, goal statement, scope of the project, schedule, and then the team charter. So, what it really talks about? We need to identify why we want to do this project and what happens if we don't do this project. It will help us identify what is the real problem. So, once you identify the real problem, you go back in time and collect some data and see what is the extent of the problem. so quantify that problem with data and once you quantify the problem with data you create a goal goal should be smart specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound so once you create a smart goal you define the scope of the project what is in the scope and what is out of the scope of the project so this scoping is done to tell all the stakeholders that what are we going to work in this particular project then you define the schedule like recognizing the problem will take you know how much time identifying and analyzing the causes will take how much time identifying the solutions or building the solutions with the help of kaizen burst how much time we are going to take and then the result and control in the end team charter there is a lean coach that has to be identified there is a sponsor there is a project owner and there are team members of the particular project project charter if it is made with the help of last 3 to 6 months data problem is identified a tangible goal is taken and scope is clearly identified team is identified schedule is defined it in a nutshell the is the citation for your project it helps you identify the problem with data and it also provides the holistic view to the management about what is the problem that the team is going to solve the next is eight ways or muda so there are eight types of waste which exist so why do we need to learn these uh, different types of waste because when you do a value stream mapping when you define your process end to end when you identify the non value added activity in the process you are able to identify these waste with the help of which you will be able to say okay this is a non value added activity so these eight waste are you can uh, remember this eight waste with the acronym downtime d stands for defects O stands for overproduction, W stands for waiting, N stands for non-utilization of resource, T stands for transportation, I stands for inventory, M stands for motion, motion means human motion, and E stands for extra processing. So defects we all understand when the customer requirements are not met as per the defined SLAs, it is a defect. o is over production there is a confusion between over production and extra processing so let me take an example and clarify this so a car manufacturing company receives an order to manufacture 10 cars but they created 11 cars so that's over production in the next order they manufactured 10 cars only but when they were painting 
they painted instead of two coats they painted three coats so that's extra processing so that's the difference the next waste is waiting waste so we all understand what is waiting whenever we are waiting for an approval whenever we are waiting for an email whenever we are waiting for data whenever we are waiting for components parts all these are wasteful activities and is non utilization of talent so a person who is very highly qualified doing a clerical job uh, an engineer you know doing scanning of papers that's the that's the entire job he has he or she has for the day so that is non utilization of human resources there could be a non utilization of machine as well so non utilization of machine like lathe machine is only used for drilling in services industry if there is a software that we have we have 100 licenses for one year but we are only using 50 licenses so that's non utilization of resources t stands for transportation waste unnecessary transportation of products is a waste i stands for inventory unplanned inventory is a waste appropriate inventory is not a waste extra inventory or less inventory is a waste m is motion unnecessary movement of human beings is a waste so wherever it is possible try to cut that waste friends you can buy my authored books on amazon my first book is eight steps to problem solving which talks about six sigma concepts and my second book is continuous improvement the lean way which talks about the lean concepts now when we have understood what are different kinds of waste which exist in the process these waste will help us identify the non value added activities in the process steps so let's understand what is value stream mapping in a value stream map we define the end to end process from say for example process step number 1 to process step number 5 we define the cycle time of the process steps and wait time between the process steps wherever there is huge wait time we know there is a waste waiting waste happening whenever we see this is the sign triangle is a sign of inventory in a value stream map so whenever you have huge inventory it means there is an inventory waste which is lying here if there is a rework loop which is happening somewhere it means extra processing is happening so all of these are different ways to identify waste and those wastes are leading to non value added activities once you define the end to end value stream map with cycle time and wait time you define uh, inventory you define the path of the process you know flowing from step 1 to step 5 and then you can identify where is over production happening where is non utilization of a resource where is waiting waste any other kind of one of the eight wastes which are happening and then you identify those wastes and try to solve these wastes with the help of kaizens so there are red and green color stars red color stars indicate non it kaizens and green color stars indicate it kaizens for example you implement rpa in a process rpa stands for robotic process automation so if you have implemented rpa it is to uh, reduce the cycle time of a process it is basically an it kaizen if you are documenting a process if you are training somebody all these kind of uh, improvements will be non it kaizen so they will be marked in red so once you have identified all your value added versus non value added activities all the waste which you have identified now you have identified the kaizens so once you identify the kaizens you need to establish why why analysis and figure out what are the solutions to these problems the system is running slow why it is running slow it could be because it is a legacy system why it is a legacy system nobody tries to update that and why nobody updated it because nobody had analyzed the end to end process as of today so solution is analyze the end to end process identify the current workable solution available in the market and update so that will help us reduce the redundancies in the system why why analysis helps you do that you will be able to bridge the gap between identifying the problem and identifying the solution if the problem is identified the real root cause of the problem will come up automatically if you will do why why analysis the next most important thing is control plan as i said it is important to control the improved state so control plan is one of the lean tools which help us keep the process under control so in a control plan what is to be implemented when it is to be implemented where it is to be implemented who will implement and how it has to be implemented and then somebody needs to check that particular control as frequency of check and check by for example an audit has to be done so who will do that 
the quality manager will do that when it will be done it will be done on daily basis where it will be done it will be the cases will be picked up from the shared lan and the score will be updated on the excel sheet and how it has to be done five transactions processed by the associates should be checked on daily basis and this the the control that the team is trying to provide with this particular action is that they want to improve the quality and maintain the quality scores this control needs to be monitored by avp quality so an audit report will be shared with avp quality on fortnightly basis he will be able to ascertain whether the quality manager is checking all the required audited transactions on daily basis or not so that is how the control plan helps in improving the control state because if this particular instance will be controlled the overall quality score will remain where the team wanted it to be so friends i hope you would have understood how to identify a problem how to analyze the problem how to identify the root causes to that particular problem and then how to identify the solutions to those identified root causes and then implementing those solutions and finally controlling the improved state so this is the four step lean problem solving approach and in learning this approach we have used these lean tools so what i always feel is that learning these tools separately and learning the approach separately will not make a difference so learning them together merging them and making it a process will really help so i hope you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye